Can you believe that scientists speculate that less than 5% of the Earth's oceans have been explored? And even the little we've explored, you won't believe what's down there waiting for us. It helps him to suck in water when his mouth is busy. Aww. His face. Like sharks with teeth like a saw, fish that glow with transparent heads, and slime eels that harness the power of snot to subdue their prey. We're not kidding. Don't get us started on the spiders of the sea. This is why the ocean is a scary place. The boys have got two little appendages just down the bottom near the cloaca there. They're called claspers. <laughs> Helicoprian shark. Get a good look at this sea monster. This extinct shark lived approximately 290 to 250 million years ago during the early Permian to early Triassic periods. It was first discovered in 1889 and named Helicoprian, a name which means spiral saw. The jaw created a rolling back and slicing mechanism so you can just imagine this shark literally sawing its way through a good meal. And those teeth. Apparently, this creature's world teeth were actually housed inside the bone of its lower jaw. But the helicoprian preferred softer food and likely ate soft tissue prey such as squid or octopus rather than hunting creatures with shells or hard skeletons. Although it's certain they could eat whatever they liked with chompers like that, the fossils of this creature have long mystified scientists because, for the most part, the only remains of the helicoprian are its teeth. Its skeletal system was made of cartilage, which doesn't preserve well. So using scans and making 3D reconstructions of the jaws of the ancient beast, researchers have solved some of the mysteries surrounding this large, terrifying shark. It was also quite big, growing up to 25 feet long. Could you imagine if this monster roamed the blue oceans today? Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Zombie starfish. These unusual creatures have been filmed actually ripping their own limbs off, and the removed limb has continued to survive, literally walking away like a zombie from the body it was just removed from. Is this starfish a zombie? Technically, no, but it does have up to 24 arms and 15,000 little tubular feet, like powerful suckers, to help grab, open, and eat clams, snails, abalone, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins. The sunflower star is the largest sea star in the world, with a maximum arm span of 3.3 feet. It's also one of the fastest animals on the ocean bottom, crawling over 3 feet a minute, which may not seem that fast to us, but is speedy if you're a clam just chilling on the sand. However, this unique sea star has been listed as critically endangered. More than 60 institutions joined in the population study of the sunflower sea star, which plays an important role in maintaining kelp forests and thus sustaining marine life along the west coast from Africa to Baja, California. Populations of the sunflower sea star suffered dramatic crashes because of a marine wildlife epidemic event, referred to as sea star wasting syndrome. But these zombies like starfish seem pretty tough. If they can handle tearing their limbs off, there's a good chance they can pull through. <laughs> Lion's Mane Jellyfish these jellyfish are some of the longest animals on the planet. Their bodies alone can grow to be as wide as 8 feet, and their tentacles can grow to nearly 120 feet, longer than a blue whale. But if you're swimming in lion's mane territory, pay attention. They can sting you whether they're alive or dead. In 2010, somewhere between 50 and 100 swimmers were stung off the coast of Rye, New Hampshire, and when a 40-pound lion's mane corpse was found at the scene, the authorities felt they'd found their perpetrator. But could a solitary jellyfish really inflict so much mayhem? Yeah, these guys can have up to 1,200 tentacles. They're arranged in eight sets that contain between 70 and 150 individual tentacles apiece. And their stings? Ouch! Human encounters with the jellyfish can cause temporary pain and localized redness. In normal circumstances, however, and in healthy individuals, the stings of the jellyfish are not known to be fatal. If there's contact with a large number of tentacles, medical attention is recommended after exposure. Its range is confined to cold, boreal waters of the Arctic, Northern Atlantic, and Northern Pacific Oceans. It's common in the English Channel, Irish Sea, North Sea, and Western Scandinavian waters. 
Deep Sea Hatchet Fish These ghostly creatures get their name from their hatchet shape when seen in profile. You probably won't have these guys in your aquarium at home. They can be found in all the major oceans in the warmth of tropical and subtropical waters several hundred feet beneath the water's surface. Here, there's enough light for a good set of eyes to be useful. They therefore have a good set of eyes. They even point upwards to some extent so that they can look skyward and soak up as much light as possible. Prey such as small crustaceans and fish can be spotted by the shadow they cast. It uses silhouettes to find prey. Predators may well be able to use silhouettes to spot marine hatchet fish. Becoming incredibly thin probably helps mitigate this issue, but these little beasts have another trick that makes them all the more ghostly. Their underside is covered in bioluminescent photophores that can emit blue light of just the right intensity such that the fish disappears into the surrounding twilight. They can adjust the intensity of their underbelly lights to make them nearly invisible against the faint light above. Genius, right? With this cloaking device, they remain safe and sound right above their enemy's nose. <laughs> hairy frogfish. It's not a frog. Is it a fish? And why is it hairy? Its scientific name, Antenarius striatus, kinda says it all. Those little hairs you're seeing are in fact not hairs, but instead, they're skin appendages, like little antennas. They also have giant mouths capable of swallowing prey whole, even if they're twice the frogfish's size, making them stealth formidable predators. The hairy frogfish's rod is a modified first dorsal spine and movable like a lure. When the prey approaches the frogfish, it'll move its lure to tempt it. If that doesn't work, the frogfish will gently crawl towards its prey and carefully orient itself so it's facing its victim. And then, snap! As soon as the prey is within one body length of the frogfish, it'll strike with lightning speed, called the striking zone. And the fact that hairy frogfish are also great at camouflaging themselves, often mimicking the colors of the seaweed where they're found. And have you ever seen a hairy frogfish move? Frogfish jump by sucking in water through the mouth and shooting it in airstreams behind them. They really are jet propelled. For any muck diver, underwater photographer, or weird animal enthusiast, this creature is of particular interest, the hairy frogfish. <laughs> Leatherback turtle. They're named for their tough skin that resembles rubbery leather. Leatherbacks are the largest turtles on Earth, growing up to 7 feet long and exceeding 2,000 pounds, but are the only turtle species in the world that does not have a hard shell and scales. And these big beauties have been around a very, very, very long time. These reptilian relics are the only remaining representatives of a family of turtles that trace its evolutionary roots back more than 100 million years and have existed in their current form since the time of the dinosaurs. What you wouldn't expect is what's waiting inside their mouths. With hundreds of giant spikes for teeth and a small leathery tongue at the base, the mouth is the stuff of nightmares. The teeth, which resemble dozens of stalactites, are called papillae and line the turtle's mouth all the way down its esophagus and to its gut. The leatherback turtle isn't the flesh-eating carnivore one might expect either, because it only eats jellyfish. And don't worry, they pose no threat to humans. Once prevalent in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic, you can still find leatherback sea turtles as far north as Canada and the northern Pacific Ocean. They tend to nest in the tropics, however. Basking Shark The very unique basking shark is the second largest living shark after the whale shark. Adults typically reach 26 feet in length but have very small brains, about 3 inches, which has evolved due to the lack of requirement for hunting and limited energy from their diet. But that doesn't make them any less impressive. Despite their large size and threatening appearance, basking sharks are not aggressive and are harmless to divers and snorkelers, just like whale sharks. These sharks have all the chill. Believe it or not, basking sharks do have small teeth, hundreds of them. However, they do not use them when feeding. Instead, basking sharks swim with their mouths open and catch plankton as their primary diet and source of food. A surprising skill of the slow-moving basking shark is its ability to breach. Like its relatives, the great white shark and the mako shark, basking sharks can leap in the air. Basking sharks are thought to breach for a number of reasons, to rid themselves of parasites and during mating season. They inhabit all oceans of the world, but they prefer the subpolar seas 
and in general, cold and temperate waters of the continental shelves, though a recent study discovered that they do migrate to warmer waters to go about their basking business. <laughs> Sawfish As you soak up the sun's rays in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, unbeknownst to you, a creature may be lurking nearby in those shallow coastal waters. Three to four times the length of your average human being, this aquatic beast appears to be half fish and half chainsaw. Sawfish are easy to identify by their long snouts that are edged with sharp teeth. For years, many scientists believe sawfish primarily use their saws to dig through sediment on the seafloor to find crustaceans and small fish to eat. Recent research, however, has shown that this sawfish is a much more complex animal, and it has a tool that's used for more than just a shovel. So, what do they do with that fearsome saw? They eat other fish and crustaceans. They use their saws to catch and kill their prey. There are two species of sawfish found in the shallow coastal waters of the Gulf of Mexico and even in freshwater rivers in the southern United States, the small-toothed sawfish and the large-toothed sawfish. Both species are closely related to sharks. Sawfish can grow to be quite large too with larger individuals may grow as long as 25 feet. Do sawfish pose a danger to swimmers? Not likely. Sawfish aren't known to attack humans and they tend to stay away from areas where humans would swim. <laughs> Frilled Shark This shark belongs among the world's most primitive shark species. It sports a ruffled throat and lizard-like rounded head, characteristic features from our oceanic past that are seldom seen today. And due to the fact that the frilled shark is a descendant of a shark species traced back to around 99 million years ago, the frilled shark is often referred to as a living fossil. Only around 10 frilled shark fossils exist on record. This creature's common name comes from its gills. Unlike all other sharks, which have separate gills, this creature's first pair of gills go all the way across its throat. Each pair is lined at the edges with red fringe. The frilled shark's mouth is just as terrifying as the maw of a great white. It's lined with 25 rows of backwards-facing, trident-shaped teeth, 300 in all. And as if its teeth weren't freaky enough, the frilled shark has spines called dermal denticles lining its mouth. No one has ever observed the frilled shark hunting, but scientists believe that it uses its posterior fin as propulsive surfaces to launch itself at its prey, like a snake. But don't worry. Because of the great depths at which this species lives and its widely dispersed distribution, few humans will ever set eyes upon a frilled shark. Sea spiders These carnivores are found across the globe and they scuttle along the deep sea floor on their eight disproportionately long legs. In fact, they're classified in the order Pantapoda, which means all legs. However, while not quite all legs, they're mostly legs and they use them to walk along the seafloor and even swim or tread water. Also, their trunks are so small that some of their organs extend into their legs. Sea spiders don't have lungs. They get oxygen through their exoskeleton through their limbs. In the deep sea, they may also be lacking eyes. With a diet that includes soft-bodied animals like anemones, bryozoans, hydroids, worms, and corals, most sea spiders are carnivorous. Some are known to also dine on algae. They use their tube-like mouth that's often longer and larger than their body to suck bodily fluids out of their prey. Yikes, right? While most species span only a few millimeters in size, those that live in the deepest waters and in the Antarctic can reach up to 20 inches across. These animals live in many different parts of the world, from Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific coast of the United States to the Mediterranean Sea and the Caribbean Sea. They're most common in shallow waters but can be found as deep as 23,000 feet. <laughs> Gulper Eel These strange creatures from the deep are capable of a truly incredible feat. They can unhinge their jaws to consume prey much larger than themselves. These fish can accomplish a spectacular rapid transformation. They can inflate and deflate their bodies from a slimy eel-like fish to a giant balloon in a matter of seconds. When the gulper eel expands like a soap bubble, it allows it to scoop up much larger prey. After inflating itself, the gulper abruptly deflates its mouth and swims away. Despite the fearsome size of its mouth, however, the pelican eel isn't a particularly athletic hunter. It has extremely small eyes compared to other denizens of the deep, so can't rely on sight to locate prey. Instead, 
The pelican eel uses a pink or occasionally red light on its rear fins to lure its next meal. It's also not much of a swimmer with a whip-like tail and a lack of pelvic fins, swim bladders and scales, it's not built for going long distances. This could be why pelican eels remain at depths of 1,600 to 9,800 feet instead of joining their twilight zone buddies on a nightly migration to the surface for dinner. Not a lot is known about these elusive animals though. They've been confusing scientists for years. Walking Batfish Picture yourself scuba diving. However, just above the seabed, when a creature suddenly appears to crawl around the bottom on what appears to be feet, and even stranger, the creature looks like it's wearing lipstick. No one knows exactly why this creature sports its signature look, but this red-lipped batfish flaunts its outrageous scarlet pout with all the charisma of a 1980s goth rock star. And it can walk. It's a pool swimmer, but modified fins act as makeshift legs, helping it to walk along the sand. Well, it's more of a froggy waddle, but when a little more speed is required, the batfish can push off with the pelvic fins beneath its body and use its muscular tail to propel itself through the water. The fish also sports a fleshy appendage on the top of its head called an elysium, which contains a chemical-emitting lure that's thought to help it attract the small fish and invertebrates of which it feeds. The red-lipped batfish lives at depths of up to 250 feet in the waters surrounding the Galapagos Islands, where it's adapted to live as a bottom dweller, living and feeding on the seafloor. This fish is enigmatic, it's eccentric, and with no known predators, we should be able to enjoy its Instagram-worthy pout for some time to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Faceless Eel Deep sea scientists see some pretty weird things, but nothing comes close to this. Check out this spooky, blank-headed fish recently hauled up from the abyss. Researchers say the faceless cusk eel, a kind of bony fish, lives so far below the surface that luxuries like eyes are unnecessary. Among meat-eating sponges, flesh-eating crustaceans, zombie worms, blind sea spiders, and a toothy dragonfish, scientists found a fish without a face, a species that was only seen once before over a century ago. The fish, which was first found off the coast of Papua New Guinea in 1873, was spotted a second time recently during a scientist's expedition near Australia's eastern seaboard, two and a half miles below the ocean surface. It doesn't have any eyes, and its mouth is underneath its body, giving it the appearance of not having a face. That's why they call it the faceless cusk. It also possesses two pairs of large nostrils towards the front of the head above the mouth, and although rarely seen, it's widely distributed from the Arabian Sea to Hawaii. It lives along a relatively barren seafloor in waters that are about 34 degrees Fahrenheit, up to 16,000 feet below the surface. This species grows to 18 inches in standard length. <laughs> barrel eye Scientifically known as the barrel eye fish, or as it's more aptly known, the spook fish, it's considered by biologists to be one of the most peculiar and unknown fish groups in the deep sea. In 1939, bewildered scientists first described the barrel eye and since then have been piercing together how it lives. The barrel eye might look like a submarine, but its transparent head is necessary to navigate the 2,500 feet deep waters in the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. The green pigments in its eyes also filter out sunlight from the sea surface, helping the barrel eye spot the bioluminescent glow of jellies, aka food, or other animals swimming above. This deep-sea mystery hunts using shadows. When it spots prey, the fish rotates its eyes forward and swims upward, in feeding mode. Researchers also noted that some species have evolved to have special organs located on their bellies called souls, reflectors that deflect light from the bioluminescent organs inside their bellies, illuminating the deep-sea around them and helping them to camouflage. It could also be that the spook fish uses this adaptation in order to communicate. Either way, this sea creature is unlike any other. Hagfish The creature, also known as the snot eel, has proven to be one of the planet's ultimate survivors. Say hello to the Pacific hagfish, which are also sometimes called slime eels, yet they're not eels. These blind, scaleless, jawless fish closely resemble what many scientists believe the first vertebrates looked like. This creature's primary defense mechanism is to emit a protein that makes the surrounding water turn into a gelatinous slime, aka slime, 
Researchers have observed potential predators dying of suffocation while trapped in this slime. Nasty stuff, but it gets worse. Once a target is located, hagfish enter their prey through one of the animal's orifices like its mouth, gills, or eyes. Once inside, hagfish consume their victims from the inside out, sometimes while they're still alive. That's why hagfish are widely considered the most disgusting animal in the ocean, if not all of Earth. Oddly, hagfish can go months without food. Despite the fact that they seem repulsive, they're undoubtedly unique, and just because animals are disgusting to human sensibilities doesn't mean they don't deserve our attention and protection. In fact, these weird fish are actually pretty cool. No one is sure whether hagfish belong to their own group of animals. We weren't joking, the ocean can be a very, very scary place, but we're here to help. The more you know before you go, the easier it is to stay safe, right? Like and subscribe if you agree, and share with your friends while you're at it. <laughs>